Hey guys, it's Dave here from Creative Path Films, and today you're going to learn about how to set up, operate, and maintain tungsten lights. Tungsten lights are an absolute staple in the filmmaking world, but it occurred to me with this trend towards much cooler LED fixtures, a lot of shooters that are coming through may never have had the opportunity to work with and to learn the quirks of tungsten lights. And I would hate for people to rock up on set, blow a globe and not know what to do. Well, that ends today. Today I'm going to teach you how to set up and maintain different tungsten lighting fixtures. First, let's have a look at how to change a tungsten globe. Now, the first thing you want to be aware of is that tungsten lights run at extremely high temperatures and the globe can reach temperatures in excess of 500 degrees Celsius. So when you blow a globe, the first thing that you want to do is allow that globe time to cool down so that it's safe to handle. Now, this next point is really important. Because these globes run so hot, you don't want to actually touch the surface of the globe. This is because the oils from your fingers can actually leave a residue on the surface of the globe, and this can heat up and create hot spots. The same goes for any excess dirt or debris. These hot spots can actually swell up, cause the bulb to fail, or even explode. If you do happen to touch the globe accidentally, it's not the end of the world. You can clean it with isopropyl alcohol or methylated spirits. All right, let me show you how to replace a globe in two very common tungsten fixtures. Here we have the Arilite 800, or Redhead as it's commonly nicknamed, and over here we have the Ari 650 Fresnel. All right, let's start with the 800. All right, so when you start with one of these globes, the first thing that you want to do is you want to remove the barn doors. Here on the top of the light, we have a little screw that we're just going to undo, and then there's a little latch that we're just gonna to pivot to the side and remove the barn doors. Now that we've done that, we have this safety mesh that we need to remove as well to access the globe. Now the purpose of this is in case you do have the unfortunate uh, situation where a bulb does explode, then this is there to protect your talent. So you don't want bits of molten hot glass blasting out the front of this light. So that's why they have this cage here to protect you from that. So you'll need a screwdriver and there's just two screws here that we need to undo. Okay, once you've done that, the mesh simply slides out of the way and now we have access to the bulb compartment. Because you can't touch the globes itself, it's super important to use either a set of gloves or a lint-free cloth of some kind. Now, assuming that this bulb is hot, you can simply grab the bulb itself, pull it to one side, and it just removes like so. So now we're gonna get our new bulb, which we're gonna unbox and put into the light fixture. As you can see, these globes come very well packaged. You've got a nice amount of foam surrounding the globe, and you can actually use this if you don't have a set of gloves or a cloth to hang onto the globe. So very carefully unroll that, get rid of the instructions, which we don't need. There's our new globe there, ready to go. What you wanna do is you wanna take this pin here and you want to align it with this electrical pin on the inside of the lamp. So these are slightly spring loaded. So when you take the globe, push it in and then just slide the other pin into place. And there you go. That's how you install a new globe on an ARRI 800. All right, now let's have a look at how you can change the globe on an ARRI 650. Now this one is a lot easier to get into. All you need to do is press on the side of the housing and lift open the compartment and they have direct access to the bulb. So what you can do is you just reach in and this can be a little bit stiff and then you can just remove the bulb like so. All right, so now we're gonna unbox a new one and put in our replacement globe. As you'll see here on the inside of the globe, they don't actually have that foam covering, so you will need a glove or a cloth to be able to change these ones. Now you can reach in and touch this ceramic part of the bulb. This is fine to touch with your spare hands, it's the glass that you want to avoid. So when you go to touch the glass, that's when you wanna be wearing a glove or have some kind of lint-free cloth. So what you'll notice is that this bulb has two pins and they're different sizes. So you have a small pin and a large pin. And you just need to line that up with the slots in your light fixture. All right, let's put it into the light. So there you have it. That's how you change a globe on an ARRI 650 or 650 plus. Okay, so now let's talk about 
handling. As you can imagine, a tungsten filament globe is very fragile and very susceptible to vibration. And this is compounded when the light is on and at a high operating temperature. So what this means is if you're going to be panning, tilting, lifting up, lowering, or physically moving the light, you're much more likely to blow a globe if you do those things while the light is turned on than if you turn the light off first. So it's always a good rule of thumb to turn the light off, make your adjustments, particularly if it's a big move, like you're physically moving the light, and then turn the light back on again. That way your globes will last much longer. So as we discussed, these lights get incredibly hot and just the housing can get up to 200 degrees. And that's why it's really important to have a set of these, leather gloves. And this is to protect you from getting burnt and it will allow you to safely make adjustments to the light, move the barn doors, gel the light, do things like that when it's at a high temperature. Proper leather gloves like this are recommended, but if you're in a pinch and you need to get something quickly, leather gardening gloves can do the job. They just don't take as high a heat as gloves like this. All right, now let's talk about light control. Tungsten lights can be very, very flexible when it comes to how you can control the light coming out of them. And most of these lights come already out of the box with a flood and spot control. So you can adjust that to adjust your beam angle. And how it works is it physically moves the bulb further back or further forward in the housing, giving you a wider or narrower beam angle. They also come with a set of barn doors, which allow you to cut or control your light even further. You can also use an electrical dimmer to control the output put of the light as well. One thing to be aware of when dimming tungsten lights is because you're lowering the physical temperature of the globe, you're also lowering the color temperature as well. So the light will get warmer and more orange the further down you dim the globe. Now you can't just use any old household dimmer. This one here can handle up to a thousand watts as these lights are 800 watts and these lights are 650 watts. So they draw a lot of power. The next way you can control tungsten lights is with these guys, and these are called scrims, and they come in a variety of different grades and styles. So I've got two sizes here. This one is a larger one. This is for the ARRI 800, and this is the smaller one, which is for the 650s. Your red scrims designate a two-stop light reduction, and your green scrims are a one-stop light reduction. And then you also have these scrims here, which are you know, half and half scrims. So this allows you to cut light or reduce light on a particular part of your shot. So you can put this into the light, rotate it, and decide where you want the light to be full power and where you want it to be one stop or two stops darker. So these scrims go directly into the barn doors of your light. They've got a latch here on the side, which you just unscrew. Move that to the side, and then you can slot these directly into the barn doors and close up the latch again and you can actually stack multiple scrims into the one set of barn doors. And it's the same thing over here on the 650 as well. They have a latch that you just lift up, push to the side and slot the scrims in. Another way that you can control tungsten lights is with gels. You can use gels like a, an ND or neutral density gel to help reduce the output of the light, or you can use gels like diffusion to help soften the light and give you more of that nice classical beauty look. But what if you want to mix your tungsten lights with daylight fixtures such as LEDs or HMIs? Well, that's where color correction gels comes into play. The color correction gels that you use to convert tungsten lights to daylight is called CTB or color temperature blue. And it comes in a number of different grades. Our first CTB gel is this one. And this is our full CTB or the code is LEE201. And that converts your 3200 degrees Kelvin to 5,600 degrees Kelvin with a one and two thirds of a stop light loss. Next is Li 202 or our one half CTB gel. And this one will get you roughly in the middle at a 3,200 degrees Kelvin to 4,300 degrees Kelvin conversion with a one stop of light loss. Our next CTB gel is this one here, which is our Lee 203 or our one quarter CTB strength. And this will convert our 3,200 degrees to 3,600 degrees. So it only cools it off a little bit for two thirds of a stop of light loss. You can also get Lee 218, which is one eighth strength CTB. And I don't have one of those here with me today, but it will give you a very subtle effect. It will give you a 3,200 Kelvin to 3,400 Kelvin conversion. So only very slight for a one third of a stop light loss. 
If you're a little bit confused by all of these different Kelvin values, then it might be a good idea to go check out this video right here to learn more. One tip when gelling lights is to always keep your barn doors outstretched. Never gel lights with your barn doors wide open like this. If you have your barn doors wide open, then what you're doing is instead of having your gel here, quite a distance away from the main source of heat, the globe, you'll be moving that gel much, much closer. And then you have a much bigger chance of either discoloring the gel by slightly melting the center of it, or setting the whole thing on fire, which I've seen happen and is never fun. One last thing when it comes to gelling lights is when people gel these barn doors for the first time, often what I see them do is they'll do this, which is just jam the pegs onto the front of the barn doors like so. But this is creating a similar issue to what I just described. It's curving the gel inwards and moving it closer to the globe, so it's more likely to discolor. So the best way that I've found to do it is actually to peg it from the back. And I'll turn this around so that you can see. So fold the gel under and peg it like so. And that way, the gel is nice and far away from the globe, so you're less likely to get any discoloration like that. One more thing to point out is that these barn doors do in fact come with gel clips, but they're really tough and they get very, very hot when the light's on. And I found that more often than not, they just rip your gels. So I prefer to use these, just your regular C47 wooden pegs. One final note is to only use gels from reputable companies. And there's only two that I'm aware of, and they are Lee filters and Roscoe filters. And they produce gels that are designed for high heat lights like this. If you use something off brand or you go with a DIY solution, I've seen people try uh, cellophane, I've seen people try baking paper as diffusion, then if you put it in front of a light like this that's 500 degrees plus, then that's just a recipe for a house fire. So only use the real thing, it's absolutely worth the money, and you're getting gels that will give you accurate colors. Now what if you want to go one step further than just putting diffusion gel in front of your barn doors? What if you want to add something like a softbox or a chimera? Well, you absolutely can do that with tungsten lights. I have a set here in the studio, but you want to make sure that they are designed for hot lights. If you grab one that you would put on an LED fixture that's been designed for low temperatures, then that is just a recipe for destroying your softbox. So make sure that you find ones that are designed for hot lights. Well, there you have it guys. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into tungsten lights. If you learned something today, make sure to let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. And if you've got any questions at all, let us know down in the comments below. If you'd like to see more videos like this on more gear, make sure to hit subscribe. We put out videos every single week. And if you'd like to learn how to use your lighting fixtures that you already have, check out our film lighting techniques playlist. Thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you in the next video. All right, metho. So it can very easily. Well, there you have it, guys. I hope you enjoy it. Deep dive that nobody asked for. If you're a bit confused by all these Kelvin values, then why not go and check out this? Screw you.